Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Sci-5. A tutorial series where I show you how to take your sci-fi builds to the next level. And today we're getting into the nitty and gritty futuristic world of cyberpunk and sci-fi exterior decor. From towering chimneys to sleep rooftop antennas, we're going to explore the details that make up that cybernetic skyline of tomorrow. So, let's hey, dive- hey, uh, hey buddy, you got any change? No, no, sorry, I, 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 don't, I don't have any money. So let's dive into it, shall we, before I get mugged? In the future, with so many people crammed into industrial metropolises, it's important to try and keep the buildings cool. So industrial fans are perfect for adorning sides and roofs of your cyberpunk cityscapes. So cooling fans are a really great way of decorating both walls and roofs of buildings. This one here is one of our largest roof ones, and as you can see, I'm using cauldrons in the bottom of it, so we get this really nice effect where it kind of looks like a grill. And then if we go down, we actually have a basalt, smooth basalt there uh, underneath, so it's raised up off the bottom, so we get this really nice three-dimensional look when we move around on the top. Uh, we could put glass over this, some clear glass or some stained glass to kind of give it a little bit of a, a color boost. And then coming around, we have uh, some nice polished andesite and we're using some blast furnaces to make it look. We have some side venting as well as, of course, our trusty uh, acacia, which we're using as a sort of like vent ducting. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why am I using acacia and not copper? Well, as it stands, I am currently using version 120 and, you know, we don't have any of the nice copper trapdoors yet. But, you know, feel free to use copper if you prefer. And then behind our large one here, we have two small ones. We have one here that's using a little micro design. As you can see, it's slightly different. This one's using stairs as well as slabs and then trapdoors to get this sort of fan blade. Whereas on these, it's relatively small. So we're just using some slabs. Uh, we still have our basalt underneath and we're still using our cauldrons to act as venting. However, we've got this duct in and this is going over to this one here and I filled this one with lava so it kind of looks like a heated element behind the grill. So it looks like it's hot behind there. And again, we're using our blast furnaces and our polished andesite as well as our diorite and calcite mix for around the bottoms to get that trim. But you can mix up these colors and make it whatever color you like. And then going up, we have another four fans. We have these two here, which are using slightly different designs. So we have this one here, where we're using our trap doors, which we have opened up. And then we have a block in the middle with our bit on, and that is just a nice simple fan. And then the one above is slightly more complex because we're actually using some deep slate and then going into the blocks and then off the sides of the blocks, we're using our trap doors. So we kind of get a similar fan design to that one down there. And then next to those, we have this big chunky boy with a grill in front. Uh, you could use iron bars if you wanted in front of all of this. I just kind of liked the really thick look. And this was originally made for a build that I was doing where you could sort of go inside. It was like broken down so you could like slip behind and go inside uh, into like a big ducting system of a mega build that I was doing. And then down here we have one of my favorites. Uh, I use this a lot. If you've seen any of my random craft episodes for season three, you'll have seen this crop up quite a few times. This is a really, really small fan that just fits in pretty much anywhere, anywhere you would want to put it. It's really great for incorporating into other builds. This is actually super easy to make. So here's how to make it. So to make that small cooling fan, you just need to find an area of your wall that you would like to put one and then knock out four blocks like that, go behind and then just one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then there, there, there and there like that. And then come around to the front and just hop inside like this. And we want to look this direction. We want to put one there. And then on the bottom, we want to look this direction and put one there like that. And then one here and one here, just like that. And then go back around to the back and we want to put a lever there and a lever there and then just power those. And then when we come around to the front, we have this lovely little fan blade. And then all we have to do is just put some stairs there, there, there and there. And there we go. Nice and simple. Now, how about maintaining the cybernetic ecosystem of your metropolis? 
Energy or water gathering as well as storage are musts in the hustle and bustle of the industrial cityscape, so many roofs are littered with ways for the humans to scrape by. So starting off with our roof decor, we have this really, really nice, simple solar panel design that I came up with. I'm really happy with how this came out. This is literally just using water filled cauldrons, but they really do look like solar voltic cells on the top of a uh, roof for a solar panel. And I think it looks really, really nice. It's very, very simple, very easy to make. As you can see, it's just cauldrons underneath and we're just using them to make these really nice solar panels. And then behind that, we have this uh, nice sort of like air conditioning sort of like block that sits on the top and as you can see we're using our little micro fans that I showed you how to make before and then as you go around we have two more on the back and then we've got our sort of ducting that would go down into our building that comes up to this he sort of refrigerated unit I guess this big industrial refrigeration unit and hyper cools everything down and then pipes the cold air back down into the building underneath. We then have two little small fan designs. These are very common. You'll have seen these before, I'm sure. But to make these, literally, I just use blast furnaces. They tend to be my favorite because we get this little two-tone. And we get this, like, meta metallic? Metal? Metallic? Yes, metallic. We get this metallic look for the tops of these. And then we're just using a bunch of rails that we've sort of made into a curved shape. And then we're using acacia slabs just to put down a little bit of ducting. You could also use walls. Walls are also a fantastic thing to use as well. And then we have this energy silo system. Uh, one of the things that I find very important to do with Minecraft is to try and make the game feel less sterile. So we have a bunch of stuff that we're utilizing here to get some animation. So as you can see, we have a little cart going backwards and forwards. That kind of just looks like it's doing something. I don't know what, but it looks like it's doing something. He looks happy. He's happy. Look at him. There he goes. And then down here, we have this little awesome design, which I'll show you how to do in a few moments. So as you can see, we have this bit where it kind of looks like pistons are moving up and down. And that's super, super easy to do. And I have wasted many, many hours just standing and watching those things go backwards and forwards like that. I, I don't know. I, I find it very fun. And we're also utilizing the same effect on this energy cell here, which would also sit on the top of a building. So this here would be sort of like next to or around. It's basically like a gigantic backup battery for, you know, extreme power cuts and stuff like that that would be happening in, in an en high energy consumption sort of city. And here you can see we have the same thing again, which I think looked really, really cool. So how about I show you how to make those really quick because it's very, very easy. So to make a bit like this behind me, all we need is a few banners, some hoppers, some concrete, and preferably some frog lights or some way to add light in because, you know, it makes it look nicer. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, like that. And then one, two, three, four, and five, like so. And then all we have to do is look on top of the sort of banner post because only the bottom part of the banner actually has a hitbox and we just want to put down our hoppers directly on each of those like that. And as you can see, we'll get this lovely animation effect. See, super simple and effective and just adds a little bit of animation in and I really, really love them. I, I genuinely can waste way too many hours staring at them. But it's not all about energy though. We also want to store water because, you know, droughts and stuff are probably going to be a thing that will occur more and more in the future. So we have this big H2O tank here. So as you can see, we've got some um, glow lichen on the inside just to add a little bit of light. It kind of has this sort of dimly lit glow to it when it's at night. And we have the pipe going down into the building, some extra bits. Uh, this one is really, really cool. I really like this. And if this one isn't to your liking, then we also have the sort of more classic water butt sort of looking thing. And this one has a ladder around this side, so you can kind of go up. And you can actually put a trapdoor up here if you wanted to be able to go down and make it some sort of like little storage area. Or just fill it with water if you really, really wanted to add something. You could put some windows in on the sides to be able to look in like viewports. But yeah, those there are a bunch of really, really fancy and fun ways to decorate your roofs. Moving on, chimneys are essential for dispersing the remnants of industrial progress into the cybernetic atmosphere. These towering structures serve as reminders to the ever-churning machinery and the never-ceasing consumerism that fuels the heart of the city. 
Yes, it's not all about gathering stuff though. Sometimes we just need to get rid of waste and that's where chimneys are super awesome. So we have three chimneys here of varying different sizes. We have this sort of short stubby one. We're using some lava in here. Uh, you would definitely want to make sure fire ticks probably turned off before making this one because it would just set fire to all of the acacia, I would imagine. So make sure you have fire tick off or use something that, you know, doesn't burst into f flames when, you know, in contact with lava in Minecraft if you have fire tick turned on. Uh, but we have some lava in here. You could also just replace these with um, frog lights. But I really like this because I can go up onto my roof and just throw items in, you know, the amount of rotten flesh just just toss it all in there and watch it get incinerated it's a nice way of getting rid of it <laughs> just you know when i'm flying around and i've got some before i go back to my base and I accidentally throw it inside chests and then we have our medium chimney here this is using our sort of like red and white sort of bits just i i really love this color scheme that you see on like old chimneys so I figured that that was something that they would maybe do more of, you know, as we return back to like a new industrial um, sort of era. And we just have uh, some walls coming up here with some blocks and then it cuts out and then goes into stairs. We're using some uh, lightning rods here uh, and then that goes onto some iron bars and then goes into a chimney. And then you could make that, you know, as tall as you really liked. Uh, you could also like crook it out and make it crooked if you wanted to add a little bit more sort of whimsy in there uh, and then we've got some more iron bars and then we just have trapdoors and of course our campfire so we get the little smoke effect and then we have the big boy chimney and the big boy chimney is a big boy uh, hence why I called it the big boy chimney uh, we have some antennas so we have some little side antennas just uh, you know I imagine like a mobile service was, would just be like oh let's, let us do this and we'll give you some money or credits or whatever they use for money skin cells or something i don't know <clears throat> um anyway we're also using some redstone torches up here and some soul torches so we kind of get that mix between like cyan and red so it kind of looks like um the, the the little signal bits that you get on towers to alert aircraft that there's things that are around and then we go up further into our chimney and then we have another antenna and then we keep going up we have a little bit for cleaning so like when you somebody like climbs up here there's a place for them to latch onto and then at the top again we just have our campfire down there and then our little trim around the top you could also dirty this up a little bit you know put in some tough and some maybe some cobbled deep slate and blend this out so it kind of looks like there's like heavy coal usage or just grit and grime has spilt out um you could also put down some carpets around the bottom to kind of add in a bunch of stuff there just remember, the key with doing good chimneys is make them look grimy, make them look industrial, make them look dirty, and also make them look tall. Everybody likes a big tall boy. Alright, next up there's graffiti, where art meets rebellion in the cyberpunk streets. It's crucial to capture the civil unrest that comes with a dystopian future, and nothing says rebellion like graffiti. So here we have a couple of lovely bits of graffiti to show you and graffiti is a lot easier than what you would initially think. You basically just make pixel art, make it look all grimy, throw in some glazed terracotta and stuff to kind of make it look like there's graffiti underneath that's been washed away and then my little pro tip for you is to try and collect ores because when you mix your ores in it looks like bits of overspray and stuff that have kind of like bled over the lines kind of get that a lot with graffiti particularly when it's done fast and in a cyberpunk environment where you know it's a totalitarian uh corporatocracy they're gonna want to do it fast and get the hell out of there because cameras you know they're always watching so we want to make sure that we kind of get that rushed look to it it's slightly worn it's slightly grimy it's got the overspray and on this one here we're using our copper raw to kind of also get the overspray of the oranges so i try and make sure i use ores that will kind of work well with whatever the graffiti piece is but as i say just make some pixel art grime it up bury it in a wall put some stuff around it to kind of add in some wear and tear and like it's got bits underneath it and stuff and you should be good to go and that is uh, graffiti graffiti is a lot of fun in game of course don't don't run around putting graffiti everywhere okay and if you do don't tell anybody i told you to okay you know nothing says the cyber age quite like satellite dishes 
beacons of connectivity in the digital expanse that symbolise the interconnectivity of the cybernetic age and the might of the corporate overlords. Now, satellite dishes are one of my more favourite things to make when it comes to doing anything sci-fi, whether that's cyberpunk, diesel punk, or just straight sort of like space opera sci-fi. And that's because I really just enjoy making curved forms and stuff. Now, I figured I'd share a few different designs because I see a lot of people making satellite dishes just slightly wonky. They just don't look like a satellite dish. They don't have any antenna to focus any of the stuff they you know they're, they're not using you know it's very simplistic design so here we have four slightly different designs we have this small one here relatively nice and simple we're just using again some observers blast furnaces walls a line of observers you don't have to use a line of observers i just really like this little trim effect that we get see see that little trim effect i love that and then that goes and gets connected up to basically just a semi-sphere that's all that this is when when it's basically just a part of a sphere that would curve around because that's basically what you're making a bowl and then we surround that with a trim of iron we're using some trapdoors. we're using some iron uh, bars to kind of get this extra little bit and then at the center we have our antenna which goes up into this lovely red nether brick wall just to act as the little like ball that normally sits at the end of a satellite dish and then we have this larger one back here, which is very much the same, but on a much grander scale. So we are using walls here as well as iron bars to make these big thick boy antenna. And that goes up this time into a nether warp block as the centerpiece. And then this is housed on a much chunkier base because obviously this needs to be supported well. So here we're just using some walls, some iron bars. That's going down into some blast furnaces. Then we've got some anvils into some chiseled deep slate and then some polished deep slate slabs at the very bottom and then on the inside there we just have an andesite block but you could put whatever block you want in there i actually think it would look nice if it was a um uh, probably a smoker because you kind of get that little scaffolding look now as well as the two dish types we have a shield type here this one is going on a diagonal so we have some walls connecting our antenna up so it's sort of like nice and diagonal and then that's connected up to this thick base which drops down onto these four feet now you could either do four or three but four is just nice and easy keeps it nice and symmetrical as well as creating this foot at the front we're using some diorite walls here uh mixed in with some polished uh andesite so we kind of get this really nice uh effect as we're moving because it kind of makes bits look pushed further back so we're kind of using the colors within uh, Minecraft to kind of give an idea of depth as opposed to actually having any real depth that's there and then round the back we just have the walls connecting up to the base and that one there is nice and nice and simple and then finally we have this one here this one's a slightly different uh, type of satellite dish uh, there is a name for this type but I cannot remember off the top of my head but they basically has like these four sort of shields going around a central antenna so starting off at the bottom of this one we have some observers here that's going up into a wall that's connected up to some iron bars connected up to more walls and then we have some anvil sitting at the bottom block with some levers sort of powered so we kind of get this little like effect where it kind of looks like it's fan blading in and then that goes into a wall then block and then from these andesite walls we have a blackstone wall and then two gates which connect up our shields and then that's just basically three blocks and then more walls going around with iron bars. And then those all connect up to the central column, which leads up here. And that's a really, really nice, very more futuristic style of satellite dish, which is good for a more high tech, maybe a corporation within the uh, within the world. Yes. Hmm. Holograms are where reality and the digital realm blur. Lighting up buildings and the skies alike with corporate logos and advertisements that demand your attention. So no futuristic cyberpunk city is complete without these things, holograms. Now these types of holograms that I came up with are much easier to make than you would first think. I actually have a tutorial that's available up on YouTube, you can see a card for it up on the screen just in the top corner now. There it is, and they're relatively simple to make. So all we're doing is we're making three layers. In this central layer, we are using glass panes and a few glass blocks to kind of make the actual shape for our logo. 
And then either side of that sort of glass pane layer, we have a front and back layer where we're using lit candles and end rods and some glass panes to create this sort of pixely look. And it makes it kind of look sort of 3D whilst retaining being flat and kind of has this nice pixelated, slightly holographic look to it, which works really well. So here we have a logo that is for the Entech Corporation, which is my fictitious corporation that I have within Minecraft, uh, particularly in Randomcraft. So that there is the Entech logo. So that's a nice corporate logo. Here we have some Japanese text. I believe this says Cyber, I believe, I, if I remember correctly. Um, so that that's what that says. And then this one here, we have a ramen bowl. And then we have the text underneath in both Japanese and in English. And this one here was actually come up with with me and Lagmonster. Uh, I will leave a link to his channel underneath in the in the description. Please go and check him out. He he helped me with a bunch of like coming up and brainstorming and stuff for this. And each one of these holograms is all using exactly the same as you can see here. It's all using our candles on the front and the back along with some panes and some end rods and then in the center we have our main pixel art and that is how to do holograms no cyberpunk city is complete without them antennas are tall silent sentinels of communication in the cybernetic world these antennas are lifelines to the city ensuring that information flows freely through the veins of the metropolis so antennas come in an array of different shapes and sizes, and here is just a few of them. So we have this one here. This one's one of my more favorite ones. I've used this a few times on different builds, and this one's relatively simple. It's just two big sort of towering pieces of antenna, and then they're connected up in sort of like a diagonal. You could add more of these. You could add three or four, uh, make them shorter and get them gradually tall and, you know, have two short either side and a long one in the middle. It's really up to you on, on sort of what shape you make your antennas. This one here is more of the sort of classic sort of Christmas tree design, I think is the best way of putting it. Um, but we're using uh, a bunch of blocks here, as you can see, just as we're going up. A few different bits and pieces there. And each one of these, so like this torch here, is what keeps that powered. So we're using our redstone torches to both add the elements in so like they can be seen uh, at night for aircraft and stuff but they also allow us to add in the ability to put in the functions so we can actually close a load of these trapdoors down to actually get the really nice sort of antenna look and then at the top we just sort of go into an end rod and then into a redstone torch but we don't always do it that way see on this one here we actually have a mangrove fence and then an end rod then a redstone torch so we get this more tapered look and it ends up being taller as a result this one here like this one actually has two antennas that are connected but rather than being connected via sort of like in a sort of long sort of strip this one's sort of compressed down and on a diagonal from one another and again, we're using trapdoors, uh, we're using some mangroves uh, down here. And we're using some iron ones as well to kind of get that antennary sort of shape. Really, when you're making antennas, you're just mixing up sort of iron bars, walls, and, you know, redstone torches and soul torches. And as you can see here, we're doing the same thing as we have on our chimneys. We have that sort of red-white motif. Again, trapdoors, iron bars redstone torches and soul torches and more walls and then again we're going into our mangrove this time we're going into an iron bar and then a redstone torch and it's the same for all of these so really you just want to play around and have fun this one though this one's slightly different this one's using some of the shield ones and i think these are called radomes i think then they're sometimes seen on satellite dishes so this is kind of like a mix between an antenna and a satellite dish so this is like a radome and then this bit here is almost like a shielding bit for it and then here we have our main antenna and making this was relatively simple we have walls going into our deep state blocks this sort of design of stairs uh, and blocks and then in the middle we're just using walls and you could put a design in there if you wanted by mixing up some of these walls with some other piece, bits and pieces and then that's going down into this nice thick bottom piece where we're using iron bars and walls and then into our slabs and stairs at the bottom 
And there we are, a bunch of antennas. So that was a collection of cyberpunk and sci-fi decorations. But which design captured your imagination the most? Let me know down in the comments below which one of these you liked the best. And if you want to download these and other cyberpunk and sci-fi decor, you can grab these and 150 more other assets and builds over on my Discord. A link will be just down there in the description. That's right, just, just down there. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video both helpful and enjoyable. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content just like this. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if it helped out. I would certainly, certainly appreciate it. As always, you can check out more videos that I think you will like up on the screen right there and there. There you go. Look how oh, beautiful they are. That one, that one looks pretty good. That, yeah, that one, that one there. That playlist has got a load of sci-fi stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Enigma out.